So he's, he's on the construction team. Okay. And this is April, who is our new mortgage specialist. And your daughter, Jamie. Okay. Yeah, okay. this is Francis Hilton. Okay. Hi, Francis. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Francis is the lady of the hour today because this house is moving. Time to drop me off and start to hurt the cars. Good morning. It is so good to be with you this day on a beautiful Saturday morning as we uh, gather as a community to celebrate, to rejoice, and just to stand in awe of what God has been able to do um, for through First Baptist Church, through Habitat, through our community partners. And it is truly a day to celebrate Edgar Mendoza and John Braswell for their great achievements and then for just the support and care of our community with them. I invite Mitzi Gelman, our executive director, to come forward to give us some opening remarks. Thanks, Walter. Uh, this is Walter Cantwell, who joined us back in October. He's our development director, doing a great job for a Methodist minister, what can we say? <laughs> <laughs> we all have our short walls. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about the whole Duke thing later. <laughs> but welcome to the cottages. Um, what started out as an idea back in about 2018 has turned into the neighborhood that you see now around you. Uh, by the time we're finished, after this house, uh, we'll have six more homes to build. There's two foundations that you'll see if you walk up the street a little bit and then another four that we're gonna build going up the street. At the time when we're finished, we'll have eight, 16 new houses here, which right. is most of them, yeah, thank you. Um, replaced actually nine homes that had been abandoned, um, had been more or less used for things that we don't really like to talk about very often in public, uh, but we we're really excited to be able to be here, to be able to see our vision um, come together and all of the support we know of our friends, our Habitat families, the churches, and with the hand of God. So thank you. And I'll ask Larry if you can open us in prayer, please. Let's pray. God, our Father, thank you so much for life, allowing us to have fellowship with you and fellowship one with the other. Thank you for your unmerited grace and mercy towards us. Thank you for this day, all that it means to Edgar and John and their families. Thank you for how this Habitat project has and will affect each of us. Thank you that we live in a community of believers that put their faith into action. Following you always moves us towards others. We seek to honor you through all we are and all that we do. Thank you for who we are and who we have become through participation in this. Thank you so much for all who have given money, time, labor, leadership in making this a reality. Thank you for the visionary inspirational and sacrificial leadership of Francis Hilton. Thank you for the cottages at Ridgeview. Make it your home as well. Live and walk among those living here. Thank you for Edgar and John and their families. Thank you for bringing them into our lives. Use them in the continual transformation of this community. Make them a reflection of your love among their neighbors. Make this day about you, your love and your compassion and commitment to make yourself known among all peoples. Today, we say thank you. Today, we commit to keep the dream of affordable housing alive. For all. Today, our faith sees a house becoming a home. In the strong name of Christ, amen. amen. Habitat began in about 50 years ago, and it started with a vision of people partnering together so that all individuals might have a decent place to call home. 
It began out, born out of an intentional Christian community where people were seeking to put their faith into action. And to this day, Habitat for Humanity continues in that mission where we're, our mission statement is that we seek to put God's love into action by building homes, communities, and hope. And the way in which we do that is we partner. We partner with local congregations, and we are so grateful to have First Baptist Church as a partner who has helped us to live into our mission, who has helped us to be able to come alongside Edgar and alongside John, and to be able to provide a sense of community. And we know that it takes a lot of sacrifice for a church to become a house sponsor and we are so grateful for the leadership of Joshua and of Larry, of the deacons, of the mission council, of Miss Frances Hilton, of every person who made this possible. Because I know as a former minister, there's a lot of conversations, there's a lot of prayer, there's a lot of meetings, and to lead to this very moment. And I want to thank you for your support to help us as we continue to be partners in ministry together. And so it's from the bottom of Habitat's heart that we thank First Baptist for all that you have done for our community. I invite the senior pastor, Joshua, to come forward to share a little bit about Mission Moment. I uh, thank you for the honor of us being able to participate this morning. Uh, at First Baptist Hickory, everything we do is because of Jesus. And that's not a cliche for us. Uh, what Jesus modeled, what he instructed, and much of which had to do with the love of our neighbors. Our church vision is beholding and becoming like Jesus, and service is a significant way that we fulfill that vision. So we are honored to partner with Habitat in this way to very tangibly serve and love our neighbors as Christ serves and loves us. And it is our prayer that Jesus uses this home for his good, for faith and joy and life in him. We're honored. Thank you. I invite April Schuler, our mortgage specialist, to come forward to introduce one of our partners. <laughs> From the very first day I started at Habitat, which was three months ago, um, I've been told how hardworking the families are at Habitat. Um, some of the most amazing people come through our program. And thankfully, um, my first one was Edgar, and he has not disappointed. He, he nails every single one and goes above and beyond. Um, he is hardworking, humble, resilient, and an amazing father. Everything he does is for those girls. And he does a very, very good job. Um, every time I asked him to come in and bring something, he was there that day or the day after with a smile on his face and just very thankful um, for the whole experience. I can't think of a more deserving person than Edgar. Um, he did all the hard work to get here. We're just helping him get into the, the house and um, we're happy to be part of your path, Edgar. Um, is there anything that you would like to say? Yeah. Moving to this house to have the room for my girls to grow, so they could have. They're getting older. They're they seem like they want their privacy and stuff like that. <laughs> so that's that's going to be huge. Uh, somewhere we can call home, somewhere they can grow. Uh, and we're staying at my mom's house. Thanks to my mom, she, she's helped me out a lot. Without her, I, I wouldn't even be in the position. Uh, 
carefully when they're with her. And, uh, my girls need this space. And uh, I want to thank you all, everybody, very much. Very much. So, construction site supervisors to come forward. John and Edgar to come forward. <laughs> and I'll also invite um, Bernie Whitmer and Alan Talent, part of First Baptist here. <laughs> Bernie and Alan, will you please present Edgar and John with the gift of a hammer? Please accept this hammer as a symbol of the work that you have put in, all you have achieved in the hands and hearts that you have joined along the way. May the love of community always surround you as you continue to build a secure foundation for your family and a strong roof to protect your dreams. Next, will you please present Edgar and John with the gift of a Bible? Please accept this Bible as a symbol of the love that joins us, the grace that carries us in the room that is prepared for us. May God bless you and keep you all of your days. And will all of you please join in the refrain of this dedication, we dedicate this house, O oh God. And I will gesture when we get to that place. Lord our God, who dwells in our hearts, bless the Mendoza and Braswell homes. Protect their going out and coming in. Let John and Edgar and all of their families share the hospitality of these homes with all who visit, that those who enter here may know your love and peace. We dedicate this house, O oh God. Bless their doorway and living room, O oh God. Give your blessing to all who share their room, that they may be knit together in companionship. May all who live and visit the Mendoza and Braswell homes find peace and prayer as well as pleasure. We dedicate this house, O oh God. Bless their kitchen, O God. You fill the hungry with good things. Send your blessing on these families as they work in their kitchen. Make them ever thankful for their daily bread as they dine in your grace. We dedicate this house, O God. Bless each bedroom, O God. Protect each person in these families. Watch over them as they sleep that they may rest in Christ's peace and find refreshment and renewal. We dedicate this house, O oh God, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. I invite Mitzi to come forward to share a few words 
about Miss Frances Hill? How do you say a few words about Frances? <laughs> <laughs> this is tough talking to everyone who knows her really well. Um, and then not embarrassing her as well either. So with all of that in mind, I've had the opportunity to know Frances since the early days when I worked at Sykes Orchard Home. She was back to like 1992 or so. And I kept hearing this lady's name with people saying, you need to get her on your board because she'll understand what you're trying to do at Sykes. And so I mustered up enough courage because I heard that she was pretty formidable. <laughs> and it was true. <laughs> exactly. So I just have known Frances forever. I've known her caring, her servant's heart, how she works so well with others, how she inspires others, how she hasn't inspired you enough. She would give you a firm, maybe kick or a nudge in the rear end to get you on your way. Uh, but it's just, I've been so admired Frances for so long. And one day I remember I was walking in the afternoon, I called her and we were talking, and I said, hey, what's your favorite Bible verse? I know it's like one of your favorite Bible verses, but it's always stuck with me too, because I think it, it works well for me too, and it's Micah 6.8. So it's for those of you um, who don't need a reminder, but I do occasionally, it's what does the Lord require us to do? But to act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with God. What I realized is that this is God's instructions for us with how to love him and how to love our neighbors. Uh, it seems easy, but think about the last time somebody made you really mad. How hard was it for you to be kind to that person, to respect them, to care for them? I just believe that as believers in Christ, we're called to love people, and for us all to see them as he sees them as well seems simple, but it's not. It's really tough. And to have someone to, to model that for you, to be that mentor in your life, is a um, remarkable talent, and I thank you for that. Um, I realize that so many times, too, we've drifted away from that. Um, we are more politicized. We're more opinionated. We don't always see our neighbors as being... Um, but from God, and our care for them to be as strong as well. And I think events like this bring us all together, and that's the purpose sometimes of building a house. It's not just a house for John and for Edgar and his girls, but it's like, how do we bring community together? How do we instill community? How do we return community to an area where there once had been a thriving community, but it's drifted? So with your help, we've been able to do this. Um, one of the things I want to share with you is that a couple days ago, some of the Habitat staff had a chance to meet with uh, one of the new professors from ASU. And we drifted into this conversation about the importance of mentors in your life and how, and how most people think of being a mentor is typically something you do when you're younger. Like you're looking for someone to model um, your career path or you know, different classes you should take or how you should you know, join different clubs or be part of different organizations. And threw in the idea that when you're 65, which I'll be in a couple months, I still need a mentor, and you're my mentor. Uh, you're the person I look to, uh, and I was secretly chosen to be my, your guide, my guide in my life. Um, I just want to be able to live a life like you that's filled with mercy, humility, and justice. Uh, to be as bold as you've been, to be as unwavering as you have been, and to serve God in all the things we do, including our shared admiration for the NC State Wolfpack and how we cheer for them. Thank you, Francis, so much. Present Francis with the gift of a candle. Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. This light is a symbol of divine love, knowledge, and joy in your midst. May it always light your path. 
Thank you for brightening the world of Habitat. Always. Amen. Francis, would you like to share a few words? No. <laughs> being here. We hope that you can um, take a few moments if you haven't been able to. to walk through the house, walk around, um, be able to speak and to gather together. And before we go, it's always good to have a mentor who points you in the right direction. I'm Mike Woody to share our closing prayer. Thank you, Walter. I chose a couple verses to read, too, along with the prayer. Uh, and I think they fit right in. Uh, one of the scribes uh, was uh, seeking to test or challenge Jesus during his ministry. He said, which commandment is the most of all? Which is important of all? In, in Mark 12, 36, uh, of 29 through 31, he answers that. The most important is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Can you join me in prayer? Father, uh, we love you because you first loved us. How do we express that love? We put it to work, loving others, just as you've loved us. We gather here this morning, Lord, with thankful hearts for Habitat and all they do for the community, their staff and their volunteers, all those who had a hand in making uh, this home a reality. I thank you for Francis. Lord, and her example for her church family, First Baptist Church. And I thank you for First Baptist Church uh, who had the good sense to follow her example, Lord, and, and to step out and uh, give uh, graciously uh, to meet the needs of those in our community. All the volunteers who came and uh, that went through this, this whole process, we thank them for giving up their time and their resources. Lord, I pray that you bless this home, these families. Uh, hold them uh, tight in your loving arms, Lord, as they make this house a home. We ask all these things in the strong name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Now I invite you <laughs> <laughs> to go and to enjoy your day. Before you go, there's still some donuts, and we'd love to show you around the house and uh, connect with you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you.